NaNoWriMo is just around the corner. <laughs> and we have spent so much time talking about how to prep your novel, how to figure out your story, but there are other factors at play when it comes to any type of writing deadline where you have a time constraint. And that is all the external things to your story, your life, your meals, where you can save time, your decision making. So today I'm going to give you some practical tips on how to plan your life for NaNoWriMo or any writing deadline. So let's get started. We do talk so much about the index cards and the plot and all of those things, but there are, like I said, other factors to success during an event like NaNo or any type of writing deadline that has a tough time constraint. So the first of those is your time. So a lot of times what we do is we just say, okay, I need to write 2000 words a day and we leave it at that. And while that might work for some people who have a lot of flexibility in their schedule, for many of us, full-time jobs, full-time moms, whatever it is that you're working on, our schedules are already so busy that if we don't actually carve out enough time on a sustainable daily basis, there's no way we're gonna hit our word count targets just because the math doesn't add up. So let's look at it this way. If you know that your average sustainable words per hour rate is about a thousand words per hour, which actually is kind of fast. But let's just for ease of numbers, say it's a thousand words per hour. For NaNoWriMo, if you are writing the minimum number of words per day, which is 30 days, you have to get at least 1,667 words, which means that you need more than an hour at a thousand words per hour in order to hit that, you probably need to plan for about two hours a day to make sure that you hit that 1667. And in fact, <laughs> those need to be two full, like uninterrupted, not distracted, doing your average best type of writing hours. And you need to make sure that you do that every single day for 30 days. Well, like we talked about in the Preptober Planner, there are things that always come up. We need to add in buffer to our schedule. So migraines, sick kids, work emergencies, there's any number of things that we might come across or family holidays. I've got a conference I'm speaking at in November. There's lots of other things that might come up that might take us from 30 days of writing a minimum to, well, we only really have 25 writing days. So if you download that Preptober planner, there's an exercise on a calendar that's going to walk you through that process of what's your average word count per hour and then how many days do you actually have to work? And that's gonna help you figure out how much time per day you need to dedicate yourself. I know that lately I've been writing about that speed, about 500 words per sprint, or since a sprint is about 30 minutes, about a thousand words per hour. And I know I need to hit somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 words per day because of my schedule. And so if I set aside two and a half hours a day, that should give me around 2,000 to 2,500 words every single day that I'm writing. And that will set me up for success. But here's the massive truth bomb that I wanna drop on you right now. It's like my tough love from Sarah right now is that if you set aside less time than you need to write the words that you need, you are setting yourself up for disappointment. If you, have a thousand words per hour that's kind of your average and you say, well, I've got an hour per day, so I'm just going to write my very best and see what happens. You're very unlikely to suddenly start going from a thousand words per hour to 1,667 words per hour. It can happen. Some people can do it. But for most of us, we need to show up as we are. We need to plan for the person we are today, not the person we wish we were. So if it normally takes you two full hours to write 1600 words, you need to make sure when you look at your daily schedule for the month of November that you have carved out two full hours to do that writing time. And for some of you, if you write more slowly than that, you might need three hours a day. So it's super important if you wanna plan for success and you wanna plan your life around NaNo, start thinking about how much time you realistically need per day to hit the word count goal you wanna hit. And it's just simple math. 
So you might say, well, okay, Sarah, but how do I just magically carve out this time? Well, when we're on deadline, sometimes there are sacrifices that need to be made. I can't tell you exactly how to carve that out. All I can tell you is try to have some awareness of your schedule and your responsibilities. Where can you steal time? So some ideas might be, okay, I'm going to start waking up an hour before I normally do so that I can get that full hour in in the morning. You might say, okay, I usually take my lunch break and scroll funny memes on Instagram. I'm going to do a 30 minute sprint during lunch instead. So start to dedicate yourself and start to identify where you can reclaim some time. Maybe it's going to be that you plan and prep your meals ahead of time, which we'll talk about during this video, that you don't have to actually spend a full hour prepping your menu, or maybe you can enlist the help of family members, which we're going to talk about as well. So anything you can do to reclaim that time. And I'll tell you this, take the pressure off yourself if you start to look at your schedule and you say, you know what, I need three hours a day to realistically hit 1667 or whatever your word count goal is, and I just can't find that time. Then you can enter NaNoWriMo thinking, okay, I'm probably not going to be able to hit the 50K, but according to the math and my schedule, I know that I should be able to hit 30K and make that your goal because NaNoWriMo is supposed to be about fun. It's not like somebody comes over and gives you a best-selling author career just because you hit 50,000 words in a month. It's really just about taking out that inner editor and getting some words on the page and building community. So if you think realistically, the most time that you can carve out and dedicate is going to get you to 30 30K, then set that as your realistic goal and then dedicate yourself to it and be proud of it when you hit that goal. But you can't expect yourself to become Superman or Superwoman overnight just to hit this goal and then find yourself disappointed at the end of the month because it's not your fault that you didn't win. It's simple math. You just didn't have the time and that's okay. So another tip that I'm going to give you that's going to help you with the time factor is eliminating as many superfluous decisions as possible. So I'm not familiar with all of the brain science involved here, but there is this capacity of our brains called executive function. And this is basically what we use to resist temptation, to focus, to make decisions. And there's a limited amount of it that each of us has per day. And once it's depleted, it's depleted until we rest and sleep and recover. And so if you've ever had a day where you like ate perfectly and you did everything you were supposed to do, but then by the time you got home from work, you were just like, I don't care about my diet anymore. I'm eating pizza. I'm ordering pizza. Or you had planned to exercise and somehow you just can't force yourself to do it. That's likely because your executive function was depleted by the actions you were taking earlier in the day. And the same thing comes to writing, especially if the time that you can carve out for yourself to do your writing is in the evening. This is going to be in particularly important to you because if you sit down to write, say, 8 p.m. at night and your executive function is gone, you might find that you struggle to make decisions about what's happening in your story and maybe even you struggle to focus in. Maybe you struggle to not want to open the phone and get distracted by a bunch of things. And you know what? If you're distracted, that thousand words an hour can easily become 200 words an hour. And now you need 10 hours a day in order to hit your goal, which is kind of impossible for most of us. So we need to eliminate as many things as we can that are draining our executive function. So these may sound like really simple tips, like how is that really going to help me? But I promise you, because I have implemented this in my own life and it's part of how I get more done, that if you can eliminate decisions that you don't need to actually be making on a daily basis, you will preserve some of that executive function for your writing. So two of the biggest places that I'm going to give you examples of today are your meals and your wardrobe. So let's take a look. The next place that we can save time is our closet. But mine is a bit messy, so hold on. I'm going to clean it up Mary Poppins style. Okay, there. That's better. And that brings me to one fundamental point, if this is the right tip for you, which is that 
if you can take some time here in October or any time before you're starting a big deadline project and just tidy up, clean up your spaces so that nothing is chaotic and you have a clean floor, so everything feels good. This can be so good for your mental health and creating space in your mind for the creativity that you want to do. Let's say now your closet is completely clean. <laughs> One of the ways that I can waste some time every day is if I walk into my closet and I see all of these clothes and I think, what am I going to wear today? And I stop and I maybe try this on and then I'm like, oh, I kind of don't look good in that today or what shoes am I going to wear? And then I try to pick out something else and then I don't have the right shorts clean <laughs> and it just becomes a several minute to sometimes half an hour ordeal of what do I wear today, especially for me because I'm going to be on camera all of November. So it can be a real time sink. So one of the things that I try to adopt when I am on deadline or I'm super busy is something I learned from taking a course called the 90 day year by Todd Herman. And he calls this the product protocol, but you can see this in big CEOs, fashion designers, people like Steve Jobs, when he was alive, wore the same type of uniform to work every day. And not only did they become known as that being their signature style, the reason that they do it because it eliminates the need to make a decision. If you wear the same outfit every single day, then you don't have to worry about what am I wearing. It eliminates and creates an automatic choice. And then you have all that extra brain power, decision making, and what we call executive function to work on your story and make decisions about your book. So it saves time. And more importantly, it saves mental energy. So what I would recommend is going through your closet and seeing if you have enough similar things or something that you can wear over and over again that you can kind of create for yourself a daily wardrobe. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and buy new clothes, but you might be able to check through what you have and realize that you have, you know, seven graphic tees and seven pairs of jean shorts or two pairs of jean shorts that you can rewear or eight pairs of yoga <laughs> pants or black leggings or whatever. You might find that you have something that you can wear over and over again. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like for me having a daily uniform. So I live in Texas. So it's right now it's been like 35 degrees, but it might also be 80 or 90. I have no idea. So I definitely want to plan for layers. So I have this red hoodie and up there I also have have a black hoodie ready to go. So two different colors. And then I have a pile here of the same shorts and some tank tops. And they're very neutral colors. I kind of have gone with this pattern of red, black, and white. And I have some basic tank tops that are more cotton, just simple tank tops from Amazon. These were a two pack for maybe $15. And then I also have some ribbed tank tops from Target. And these are scoop necked and they're only $5 a piece. So something super simple, easy, don't have to make a decision. I know they look nice on me and I can throw it and mix and match the colors. And then I got these shorts, which are super comfy and I love them from Amazon. And these also come in a two pack and you can get two black ones, a gray and a black. So I just have a bunch of these that I've been wearing now just as my uniform so that I'm not making those decisions. So the way this works for me is I have this particularly prepped for nano, um, but I will also throw in there that I have, I'm currently wearing these like black leggings and fuzzy socks. And I do have several pairs of these black leggings as well. So if it's particularly cold or I need to go outside and it's too cold, then I will throw on the black leggings or a pair of jeans instead, but keep the tops the same. And the way this will look for me is in this dresser here, I have a drawer that I specifically have kind of prepped for Nano. So on one side, I'm going to have the shirts. On another side, I will have my shorts. And then I will, of course, off camera, add in another one that has some underwear. And the hoodie will just go on the back of my chair. And every morning when I get up, I will be able to just grab 
what I need out of this drawer. And I won't have to go into my closet to try to make a decision and it'll be so automated. And I know that this does sound so simple, like why would this work? But I'm telling you, it can be life-changing for the right people. Some people don't want to wear the same thing every day, but having some kind of comfortable uniform that you can rely on throughout a deadline can be so helpful because you don't want to deplete any of that executive function. So just walk over here, grab, if I grab a red shirt and a black pair of shorts, then I'll grab my black hoodie most likely and a pair of underwear and I'll be done for the day. I don't even have to go into my closet, which might be a little bit more overwhelming. I also have some of these fuzzy socks on the side, as well as a couple pairs of the longer leggings. And if I need to, I can dip into my closet for jeans if I need to be a little more dressed up. If you have a full-time job, you might not be able to wear something comfy like that all, every day. But what you could do is you could go ahead on Sunday, if that's your prep day, and you could pick out your five outfits that you're wearing Monday through Friday to the office or whatever your job requires you to do and have them set out so that you're not making that decision in the morning. And then you could have a setup kind of like mine for when you get home from work, changing into either different pairs of shorts or your favorite comfy PJs or whatever works for you can help with that transition time from work to, okay, now it's writing time. I've got my uniform on. Let's go. Now let's head into the kitchen and you guys are going to see if you stick around for the NaNoWriMo diaries, you'll start to see ways that our house is starting to come together and you'll notice that it's never like perfectly clean, but we're going to go over what you can do to help with this executive function for meals. So one of the best places you can eliminate decisions and really save more time and brain function is doing a little bit of meal planning. So in your Preptober planner, you will find a actual planner where you can go through and choose like four or five breakfasts, four or five lunches, a few dinners a week. And I find similar to the uniform that if you have the same breakfast every day and you're not making decisions or maybe you alternate breakfasts and you have them prepared, like specifically plan breakfast that you can prepare in advance, it can be so helpful in saving time and decision-making ability. And one of the ways that you can do this is you could grab some basic, like these are rubber made. They can be washed on the top rack of the dishwasher. They can be put in the microwave and you can go ahead and prep stuff. So if you pick a day of the week, that's going to be your prep day. Like for me, I go ahead and plan things out. I have a little happy planner, which probably comes as no surprise to anybody that has all my meals for the week. That way my husband can also see what we're eating for the week. And my breakfasts are basically the same. Almost every day I have two breakfasts that I rotate between. My lunches are the same every day. I just have a salad. And then the dinner is a rotation where every Monday is the same thing. Every Tuesday is the same thing. And I know this tip won't work for everybody because sometimes you get bored with the same food, but if you could try it just for Nano, you might be surprised at how much it helps. But I will plan out the meals on Saturday, go ahead and place a grocery order in the app for my local grocery store so that I can just go and pick up the groceries and they just load them in the back. Saves me time. Then I come home and I prep the food. So if I'm doing, I don't like to put salads in these because they don't stay really good very long, but one of the meals that I have been doing for lunches sometimes too is taking like veggies like celery, carrots, zucchini, stuff like that. So I will take one of these and I'll put like hummus and a hard boiled egg in this side. And then I'll put a bunch of fresh veggies in here. And then I can prep five of these and leave them in a stack in the refrigerator. And then all I have to do when it's lunchtime is come and grab them. And I can actually eat this at my desk too, or I can you know, get it done very quickly. And that is really the key, eliminating decisions, making your food really automatic. So if you prefer more variety than eating the same thing every day, then plan for that, but try to plan meals that you can prep ahead have a crock pot full of pasta or something or chicken, and then you can put it in here and heat it up every day. Start getting creative with those meal choices. Also, another thing that you can pre-plan is if you are somebody who tends to get distracted while you're writing by, oh, I need to go grab a snack, and you find yourself sitting in front of a pantry trying to decide what sounds good right now, a piece of trail mix or a piece of cheese with some nuts. And that way you've got a stack of these in the pantry or better yet, right on top of your desk that you can just grab and you're not wasting 30 minutes by going and trying to find a snack. 
Another thing that I love to do is when I go shopping, I really think about the things that make me feel indulgent, but that are simple treats. So I kind of have an obsession with fresh fruits and what I call bubble water. So this is like seltzer flavored water or um, like uh, San Pellegrino, stuff like that. And so I will fill my fridge up with beautiful, colorful fruits and vegetables that I can see and like that I can see through the containers and all the waters that I love. And that just makes me feel like I'm supported, like I'm happy, like I'm excited. And again, these simple things can help so much. And we'll talk about this more when we get into mental health. So what else? Let's talk writing space. <laughs> so when Similar to what I was talking about with your closet, when your room is, or your writing space is really messy, it can also be difficult to make decisions and feel supported and feel like you can just get started writing because our brains will naturally go to, especially when we're stressed or we're on deadline, our brains sometimes will naturally go to, oh, I really gotta get that laundry done. Oh, I better start working on all this stuff that needs to get cleaned up. But if you show up your your desk and everything's already clean and organized, then it's hard to procrastinate and you're much more likely to say, okay, I'm gonna sit down. You don't have to search for anything. You don't have to go looking for stuff. You can just sit down and start writing. So I have this idea of potentially like a portable workstation. So this is super fun for me. Now I do have an office space, but sometimes I want to go outside to write. Sometimes I want to be in bed writing. And some of you may not have a dedicated office space. So you might be already writing on the couch or sometimes wherever you can find space. So grabbing yourself an inexpensive, but <laughs> nice functional laptop desk can be really nice. I got this one from Amazon and it has a little mouse pad here. So I've got this little kind of cheap Bluetooth mouse. And I've kind of growing a collection of nice keyboards that I really enjoy. So this is about $25 on Amazon and it works with anything Bluetooth. So I have my iPad currently on here and I can write on Google Docs and I can also connect my phone to here and I don't have my phone with me, but I could set my phone right here and be watching the Discord channels or I could be uh, watching the admin sprint with the Heart Breathing's writing community while I'm also writing here. And that can be super helpful. And I can take this anywhere around the house. I don't have to clean up a desk. I don't have to worry about anything else. Now you might also, if you do have a dedicated writing space, want to take a little bit of time to clean things off so that it feels fresh and it doesn't give you that kind of mental to-do list. But if you don't have that space, consider creating for yourself a little workstation and make decisions about what you're going to use to write on, what program you're going to use, and where you're going to back your work up. Those decisions can be so good for your mental health. But the other thing is, what about creating a portable caddy? So let me show you kind of how I put this together. So this is perfect for just carrying around anytime you want to go right in your bedroom or wherever. And then you don't have to go searching for everything. You've got your earbuds, your blue light blockers, you've got your Pomodoro timer, your favorite writing gloves, and all of your index cards and everything you need right here at your fingertips. Instead of it's all in drawers and you have to go searching for things, little steps like this can help so much. I will see if I can find a link to this where I got it on Office Depot. And then I'll also see if I can find a simple 
similar type of thing on Amazon, but you could use a diaper caddy. You could even use a purse organize, organizer if you wanted as something like this to carry around the house. But I like this little caddy. It's super cute. Okay. So you've got your time back because you've planned appropriately. You've meal planned. You've got your uniform. If that speaks to you, of course, if any of this doesn't seem like your thing, these are just tips that you might enjoy, but they're not like must do's, but they might surprise you at how much they make a difference for you. But let's talk about some other things that might help you plan your life for nano. One of them is getting your friends and family on board. So <laughs> one of the biggest distractions can often be the people who live with you in your own home. So how do you eliminate some of that distraction? Well, it sort of depends on your personal situation. And I know that there are some of you that are living in households where you have people who just don't support the work that you're trying to do, or they don't believe in you. And, and let me tell you, my heart goes out to you because I understand that life. And for some of you, it's just going to be survival mode. And it's going to be saying, I deserve to take this time for myself and I'm going to keep it as my private time. And maybe you don't even want to share necessarily what's going on because you don't want to be belittled, belittled or distracted. So my heart goes out to you if that is your case. However, for most of us, hopefully we do live with people that as long as we just communicate with them what we need during this time of deadline and time crunch, they will help us out. <laughs> so it can be as simple as sitting down with your partner or your parents or whoever you live with and saying, hey, I've got this exciting event coming up. This is really important to me. Or hey, I have this deadline coming up and here's what I'm trying to do. And walk them through your plan and say, hey, these are the two hours that I've determined I have time to get this done? Does this work for the family? And make sure that you get some input from them and they may be able to identify more spaces. Or you can also say, hey, can you actually help me with getting these dinners on the table? If I plan for the meals and I make sure all the groceries are ready, can you do the cooking? Or I need you to make the decisions about what we're having for dinner every night because I'm not going to have the mental capacity for doing that. You could also say, hey, I need a little bit of extra help with the laundry this month. Could you help me? And when it comes to partners, hopefully you can get some of that support. And it just is a matter of communicating and letting them know what you need. When it comes to potentially littles in your house, sometimes they don't always understand. So some of the things that have worked for me are getting them involved in the rewards and saying, okay, mommy needs this one hour to write. So I'm going to leave you with this coloring or painting activity, or I'm going to leave you with these new little horses or ponies or whatever. Or Andrew, can you watch your little sister for an hour and you guys play together with these blocks and I need this time. And if you give me this time without any interruptions and I get my word count, then we can have pizza for dinner. We have a pizza party this weekend. Or if you can give me this, we're going to go to the park on Saturday and get them involved with the rewards. And it can also help to keep them updated on how your progress is going throughout the month so that it's not like, okay, we're with you, mom, for the first week or dad. And then, you know, second week, they've all forgotten the boundaries. <laughs> so it can be about expressing your boundaries, expressing your needs. Maybe you want to put a sign on your office door that says, I'm writing, leave me alone for a little while. Actually, in the back of your Preptober planner, there's a sign that says something like author at work. So, you know, do not disturb. Put that on your bedroom door or wherever you need to put it so that you can let them know when this sign is up, this is the boundary and I'm setting this for myself and I need this. And once December comes, I'm all yours again, but this is for me. And communicating that can be hugely helpful. Another thing that can be super helpful when it comes to your friends or your your when it comes to your family or people living in your household is to go ahead now and identify when those interruptions come and make a plan for it. So if you notice that every time you try to get up at 6 a.m. and write, your husband's coming in and talking to you about what he heard on a podcast, that is something that you can plan for and you can communicate and say, okay, 
if he wants to talk to me about podcasts, then we can do that from six to 620. And I need to let him know at 620. Okay, I love that. I'm so glad we got to spend this time together. But now it's time for me to write and even set an alarm on your phone and let your husband know that, okay, I want to spend this time with you. But when this alarm goes off, I got to get to writing. So I would really appreciate your help. Um, and I know I'm using like husband in whatever terms, but just insert whatever your current situation is into that. But making sure that you have a plan in place. So if I know every day when I try to write from four to five, I'm going to have Andrew getting home from school and there's a lot of other family distractions, but that's the only time I could carve out, then I need to have some kind of plan in place, which means maybe taking a minute in the morning to set up a project, a coloring project or some kind of craft project so that when Andrew walks through the door, I know that he can start working with Evie rather than being in my office and pre-planning for those distractions can be a game changer. Okay, I know this has been a bit of a long video with lots of different tips, and I hope that some of them have resonated with you, but I want to leave you with one final tip, and that is planning out some kind of ritual for yourself to get your mind in the right place to sit down and write. When we are go, 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 go all the time, and we have this massive to-do list, and the laundry is looking at us, and all we want to do is just sit down and take a break and scroll social media or turn on Netflix, during a deadline period like NaNo, you're going to have to get yourself into a transition mindset. Because if you sit down with this hamster wheel going through your head, that 500 words per sprint is going to go down to 100 words per sprint. And you're going to wonder why you're struggling. Well, it's because your mind is too busy. And when we have that much going on, it can be so helpful to give yourself a transition ritual. And it can be fun to create that now. So let's say you come home from a long day at work, you know, you've got to get straight into your chair, which is not your normal thing. But this is your writing time. And your mind is buzzing with all the things that happened at work come up with a peaceful transition ritual. So for me, this looks something like laying down on the floor, semi-supine with my knees bent, hand on heart, taking some deep breaths, letting everything that's in my mind just float away. So I had a therapist once that took me through an exercise where she had me imagine, anytime a thought would come up, she had me imagine that it went into a big bubble and floated away bubble flowed away. So as you're transitioning from one thing to a net to the next, let your mind empty and any thoughts that come up to interrupt you, just let them go. And that will get you into a quieter, calmer space. And once you're there, then you can start your ritual to invite your muse. Maybe it's putting on your comfy socks or your comfy uniform that you created for yourself. Maybe it's lighting a special scent of candle or a scentsy warmer. Maybe it is uh, creating your space, putting your crystals out, get, putting your music on and your earbuds. But make sure that part of your ritual is opening your manuscript. No matter what, you're going to open that manuscript, not opening your phone, not opening distractions, but opening your manuscript and anything. It can be a five minute ritual or it could be a 15 minute ritual or whatever you need that can help you transition from one busy type of mindset into the quiet of I'm ready to write is going to be golden for you because our minds are some of our greatest tools and we can plan all we want when it comes to the story. But if we're not in the right mindset to focus on it, it's going to be difficult. So I hope these tips have resonated with you. Again, take what you want and leave the rest. I am in the description box going to have those recipes for a couple of those sort of sugar-free make ahead snacks. But it's so helpful if you can just sit down right now with your Preptober planner or any list or notebook and think of, what are five meals that I could go ahead and pre-plan and just rotate over and over? If you like to eat the same, if you don't mind eating the same breakfast every day, if you don't mind wearing the same clothes every day, go ahead and pre-plan that and get it all set up. And I guarantee you that you're going to be surprised at how much more space that gives you in your mind for writing. So I hope these tips have been original and helpful. We only have one week left of Preptober where we're going to talk specifically about mental health for authors during deadlines like NaNoWriMo and how to 
give yourself credit and be proud of yourself no matter what word count you ended up with. And then on October 30th, we are going to have a special panel of admins from the Heart Breathings Writing community that are going to help answer your questions. So it'll be a live stream Q&A and I'm so looking forward to it. Also, if you didn't hear, this week and all of next week for the 13 days of Halloween, we are celebrating over on my Sarah Cannon YouTube channel and blog for what we call the Spooktacular, which is the yearly anniversary of my first novel, Beautiful Demons. So if my videos have helped you and you want to pay it forward, some ways that you can do that is come subscribe to my fan channel, come hang out in the community. You could share some of my videos and some of my books. So my best-selling Shadow Demon Saga starts with a free box set of three books so you could let people know on your social media. And if you haven't picked up those books yourself, this would be a great time to honor my very first release by downloading that free book and giving it a read. Even if you don't normally read young adult novels, you might be surprised at how much you enjoy it. All right. Thank you guys so much. I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.